Loopy's Diner is a mainstay at the Ohio State University Union for students and faculty alike. Inspired by the 1950s, its menu is packed with breakfast favorites, diner-style classics, and sandwiches named for notable student leaders and alumni. And in honor of Ohio State University turning 150, I've gathered a few of these notable leaders together to share about its land-grant mission. President Michael Drake, Provost Bruce McFerrin, and history professor David Staley. Well, I have to say, it is really a privilege to have all of you here today. Ohio State uh, going into its sesquicentennial, celebrating 150 years. We know Ohio State as a land-grant institution, but what does that mean and how does that make OSU different from a non-land grant public university? Well, we're, as you said, we're really pleased to be one of the, the country's leading research universities and the land grant designation comes from the Land Grant Act of 1862 signed by Abraham Lincoln at the height of the Civil War. And this was a federal uh, grant to states to enable those states to start universities that would do two things. One, they would educate the sons and daughters of the people living in the region, essentially the sons and daughters of the middle class, which was great. And second, the universities would work on behalf of and in conjunction with their broader communities to um, do things that, in addition to educating the, the students who were there, they would also contribute directly to their communities. And this was really a transformational piece of thinking at the federal level. You think about, you know, 1862, we're in the midst of the Civil War, you know, a really difficult, difficult time. And Congress passed the Homestead Act. They empowered the transcontinental railroads in 1862. Things like that expanded us across the nation. The Morrill Act and the land-grant universities lifted us vertically. It brought people up to a point of sharing in the educational power of society. Which is exactly what Justin Morrill wanted. Exactly. <clears throat> the, exactly. Uh, the author of the, of the Morrill Land Grant Act. I think he, he wanted to attend college or university and couldn't. Uh, and instead went off and became a successful yeah. businessman, but wanted others to have that, that opportunity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he was uh, relentless. It was uh, uh, 10 years. Many years, right. 10 years of work yeah. before it was finally passed. So that was a revolutionary thing. Absolutely. But is the like land really. grant, is that just a 19th century idea or is that mission still relevant today? And if it is, how has Ohio State um, adapted and changed it's relevant in this very moment, and it's one of the great things about this act, the concept of the land-grant university, which is to elevate the sons and the daughters of the people of the community and the region broadly, and to apply that education to developing new knowledge to solve the problems of society is relevant today and tomorrow. It's been one of the great, that part, one of the great parts of the backbone of the growth of this nation over the last 150 years. Uh, these were to be agricultural and mechanical colleges. They would teach agriculture and mechanical arts, what we would today call engineering, and military science. So they had this practical orientation that I think bled very easily and, and quickly to a, to a research focus. And so many people still actually equate the notion of land grant with agriculture because that was so much a part of its founding, you know, it was one of the missions, as David says, that, that really uh, set the tone. But what our major land-grant universities have done is they, they've evolved into comprehensive universities, but they haven't lost the commitment to discovering new ideas and translating those to practice, to making them something relevant to society, to solving those complex problems. Uh, so <laughs> what started 150 years ago is still so relevant today. It's amazing to me that that concept could yield so much Very in the 21st century. Very durable. Yeah, it's like a good idea, you know? Was, Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> kept, kept Absolutely. Going. And now we have the regional campuses. Mm -hmm. How do they play into the land-grant mission? As we become a more and more successful university, we become more and more selective and competitive, harder uh, uh, to be admitted. And to maintain the access part of our mission, it's been very helpful to have regional campuses which have a different opportunity for students um, who for whatever reason aren't um, uh, interested in coming to or are ready to come to the Columbus campus at the beginning. There still is an Ohio State option for them as they leave high school. 
and there are many reasons that people are place bound or want to be at a smaller university, et cetera, and so we've been able to broaden access through our regional campuses as we've continued to grow the excellence across the university, including here in Columbus. No. Those students are Ohio State students. If you want to be a Buckeye, there are a lot of different doors that you can come in. Was there any specific provision um, historically as part of the land grant that this institution receiving this, this money, this grant, um, must maintain some uh, way of staying affordable for the people that you serve? Uh, I wouldn't use the word must necessarily, but, uh, and to be clear, the, the, the idea was that you would give a grant of land to an institution right. that would then be sold, the proceeds of which then would fund an endowment, and that was written in the moral grant. So it wasn't that you were given a grant of land and then you build right. like the college on that land. Right. That was not the intent of it. It was that there was an land, awful lot of land. land was yes. an asset. But the land was the asset. like As an asset. Yeah, a monetizable asset. And you used that, those proceeds yeah. to be able to build. I just was so, right. emphasizing that point. Some that, of the land yeah. was in Ohio. Uh, most of it was sort of west of the Mississippi. And I couldn't tell you exactly where, but it, a, a lot of it was uh, the federal lands mm -hmm. in, the, in the west. And uh, our, our land grant yielded a $350,000 endowment, which doesn't sound like a lot of money, but in the 19th century, that was, that was, a, that was a pretty yeah. sizable endowment. Uh, and made, I think, other colleges and universities in Ohio quite, uh, quite jealous of us. But it's said very explicitly that the, that the endowment uh, isn't to be used to uh, buy buildings and these sorts of things. Uh, and it was pretty clear the endowment was to uh, make uh, tuition either unnecessary or, and, and in fact, um, that very first day, the Ohio Agriculture Mechanical College, there was no tuition. Uh, we didn't charge tuition. There were fees that were added over time. Fees, yes. And the fees started looking <laughs> more, but at the very beginning in the 1870s, the idea was that there would not be tuition, that that would be an affordable opportunity for these families to be able to send their, their students. And we've been pleased lately to be able to cobble together grants to be able to, particularly for the lowest income families, to be able to uh, make it that that tuition uh, barrier is uh, minimized. But while you think these are not synonyms, affordability and access, yes. but affordability clearly helps define access yes. to education. Gentlemen, thank you. I have really enjoyed talking to you all and appreciate you educating us about land grant, what that mission is, and the remarkable history here at Ohio State. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.